We should be firing up right now. We're on it. We're live. How's it going, everybody? Welcome to another day <laughs> with Traveling with Bruce. How are you guys doing? Um, oh, I just got a notification that I'm live. How about that? I love YouTube. They just notified me that I'm live. How about that? I, I must be live. Uh, fantabulistic. And, of course, I've forgotten to put my mute on yet again. Uh, what can I tell you? Welcome to the show. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce here in Creston, British Columbia. <laughs> sunny. Sunny BC today. Uh, we got sunny weather, although there's a band of clouds. Go away. Just, just, just get the heck out of here. Uh, we're about 54 degrees today, just as they predicted. Uh, it's been sunny almost all day long. Fantastic. A uh, little bit of wind just starting to pick up, so maybe we got some crap coming around, but... <laughs> Been good so far. We'll take it. Uh, no complaints from this guy um, telling me, they're telling me in the weather network that not far from here, uh, to the west of us, to the north of us, to the east of us, it's going to be bad. <laughs> it's going to be really bad. Uh, and so uh, they can have all that. Uh, just give us this little protection zone, uh, the little Seattle weather that kind of comes up here through uh, Idaho and through Coeur d'Alene and Boise and up to here and Kind of give us a little protection and everybody else can just, you know, suffer. <laughs> I like to share, but not the bad, not the bad weather. <laughs> oh, man, uh, we'll have to see how that works out. So anyway, uh, welcome to the show today, you guys. Uh, I've got folks signing in already here. Uh, fantastic. Great to have you here. A um, couple things to talk about today, uh, updates and uh, stuff like that there. The channel. Uh, uh, again, I want to thank uh, thank all of you folks, uh, my loyal viewers who are here almost every day, uh, my followers who are here often, uh, and then the newbies who keep discovering this guy. Uh, this channel keeps getting discovered by you know potential new cruisers and people who cruise already and love going on cruise ship vacations, and they find out that, oh, man, there's a live uh, telecast here where they talk about cruise ship vacations all the time, and uh, deals and uh, good and the bad and the ugly and the in-between and you know anything to do with cruising we cover it and um, they have a q and a we have a wide open q and a uh, ask anything you want about a cruise uh, more than happy to try to answer a question for you if you're new to cruising you've come to the right place Th this channel is for you if you're new to cruising because we uh, are more than happy uh, i and and my viewers who are who are signing in right now saying hi to me we're more than happy to uh, pass on any advice that you folks need to uh, make your first cruise vacation as perfect as it can possibly be. Uh, because our philosophy is uh, pretty simple. Once you start cruising, <laughs> you're hooked. <laughs> you finish that first cruise of yours, you're going to want to do it again and again and again. Um, it is just uh, so common that uh, people go on a cruise and uh, they start booking their second cruise almost immediately uh, and they can't wait for the next one to start it's fantastic uh, people who've been on 15 cruises can't wait for the 16th they can't wait for the 17th it's just it's just great so uh, you've come to the right place if you're a newbie because as a newbie you're going to learn all kinds of stuff just listening to us talk about it uh, but also you can take advantage of my channel and all of my playlists that i've loaded up I now have almost, I have over 200 videos up now. I think uh, the other day, I think I did my 200th even without even noticing it. Um, I must have uh, seven or eight different playlists on cruise ships for, for cruise ship uh, travelers, whether it's uh, cruises I've been on, whether it's uh, how to find a good deal on a cruise, uh, whether it's uh, information on cruise ships, whether it's uh, uh, you know, updates on the cruise lines. Just check it out. You'll have a field day. You'll, you'll be able to spend days being in my channel and if you are new to my channel uh and you have enjoyed some of my videos or, or you're enjoying this i'd love to have you become a, a permanent uh, subscriber i have become a subscriber of my channel that would be fantastic there's a button right here you can click anytime you want a little red one it's on almost all the time and there's another one over here on my uh, on my page uh which has a little bell icon beside it if you click on the bell notification icon when you subscribe You'll get an email every time I'm going live, every time I post a new video. Uh, if there's a, something happening in the news uh, with a cruise ship, I'll probably be on the air immediately. Uh, I, I think of nothing to just go right on and start yapping away about what's going on if there's something really important going on on a cruise. Uh, if there's a dilemma, an issue, whatever, I'll, I'll just, just go live. Uh, but uh, generally, um, I love to do my shows Monday to Friday at 5 p.m. Eastern time. 
Uh, and on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I do two shows. I add a second show at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So I do two shows Thursdays, two shows on Tuesdays. And then on Saturdays, 2 o'clock Eastern time, I'm on for my Saturday afternoon show. And uh, a couple of times a week, we like to have a couple of trivia questions uh, come in. <laughs> I like to do some trivia with you guys, have some fun with that. And the rest of the time, it's talking about cruising and cruise ship holding and strategies and how to find deals and uh, the latest apps and uh, the you know, latest news announcements and whatever have you. And I got a piece, a couple of pieces of news for you today. Today's topic, I, I threw a question out there today. I thought I'm going to ask the uh, gang here and anyone who's watching the title of my video today or the title of my live stream today is that uh, it's funny now. <laughs> things that happened on a cruise or things that happened to us or to me or my travelers or happened on a cruise may not have been funny at the time, but it's funny now. And uh, I had a couple examples that I kind of thought of today. And I thought, well, I'll throw in a couple of stories, but uh, we'll see if any of you have any of these tales. Uh, uh, there are some, there's some doozies out there. <laughs> some good ones. And it could be uh, getting to the ship, uh, being on the ship, uh, you could have a doozy of a story of what happened on a uh, on a uh, on board or onshore uh, excursion. Uh, something happened to a friend of yours, a relative of yours, someone who will remain nameless. <laughs> you heard about a guy who had this happen to them, but you don't like identify who it is. No problem at all. Um, no lie detector test here. You're under no, <laughs> you're not under oath, <laughs> but make it truthful. <laughs> And uh, I thought we'll open that up. We'll open that up to the floor if anybody wants to comment on any what wild and zany goings ons on a cruise ship that may not have been funny then, but it's funny now. <laughs> the further you get away from it, the more you just have to laugh. Uh, otherwise, I've got a few pieces of news for you guys, uh, but also uh, just an update on my channel, just to know, let you know where we're at here. I sort of do this on a daily basis. Uh, those of you who are new. I'm one of the only YouTubers that actually talks about his channel. <laughs> Most of the YouTubers out there just go right into their topic, and uh, they don't they don't even talk to their people. Uh, I just love talking to my subscribers and my viewers uh, who are signing in. But uh, as of yesterday, when we were um, uh, when I got off the air last night for my second show last night, I think I was off the air. I was at 1,477, 1,478 subscribers, something like that. And uh, right now, uh, just a few minutes ago, I looked at it, 1489, uh, just a sh 11 short of 1500. So uh, I think by tomorrow, we're going to break the 1500 barrier for subscribers. And um, doesn't sound like a lot in the world of YouTube. Uh, I'm a small channel, no doubt about it. I'm still tiny. Um, there are YouTubers in this field, in the cruise uh, area, that talk about cruising and deals and everything else, how to pack for a cruise and how to find a deal. They have uh, there are channels out there with with uh, fifteen thousand, twenty five thousand, one hundred eighty thousand subscribers, and more. And uh, I'm I'm just at going to be at fifteen hundred. But I'm only seven and a half months old. This is a brand new channel, actually. And we started, uh, or I started in August of last summer, and um, uh, January the first, I was at barely two hundred. Uh, so I've added. 1,300 subscribers in the last, uh, what would that be now, uh, January, February, and now March, in three months, uh, to go from 200 to 1,500 uh, is, a, is a sign that uh, this format is, seems to be working for people and, uh, and it's uh, gaining traction. Now, I have to apologize to you. I'm noticing my picture uh, changing in hue uh, from bright to not so good. I think it's my camera uh, in my computer trying to pick up the image, uh, but it's also because it's so sunny out. Uh, <laughs> I closed the curtain, and there's still a shine on this side of my face. I have a lamp up here that I'm trying to get balance out the lighting, and I think the camera is just desperately trying to pick it up. So bear with me, folks, uh, uh, as you see my hue change a little bit from uh, you know a guy with a kidney disease to uh, <laughs> to a guy with a tan to a guy that looks awful pale. <laughs> what can I tell you? Just the way it is. So anyway, that's the latest on that information for our subscribers. Um, and other news that I just kind of let you guys in on is uh, uh, my my channel is still not monetized. Uh, it's now five weeks and uh, one day, 36 days. Uh, 36 days ago, YouTube shut off monetization for all the small channels out there. Um, my channel had, had made it to a point in subscriber counts, 1,000 subscribers and over 4,000 uh, hours of watch time to qualify me for monetization, but uh, it's, a, it's a kind of a, 
uh, it's kind of like a read, read the fine print call of qualification. Uh, the fine, fine print says, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, you got a thousand subscribers. Way to go. Uh, now you're under review. <laughs> but in the meantime, we're not paying you. We're not, you're not getting any money. So I have zero income coming in from YouTube for any commercials right now. Has been for five weeks. And so has everybody else in my uh, size category. So any 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 channel with a thousand to you know twelve hundred subscribers, or, or or those of us who made it to a thousand subscribers by Feb twenty, any of us who got there, uh, uh, which was a lot of hard work, and I had a lot of dedicated viewers help me get there. Can't thank them enough. Um, we're all under review, and I think there are a, a gazillion of us, a, a gazillion of us in review. Uh, there are also another gazillion behind us who, since the 20th of February, have now, in the last five weeks, reached 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours. And they're not even under review yet. They, they, they are now applying to be reviewed. And uh, YouTube, I think, is just up to here in, in, in uh, reviews and um, um, channel uh, adjustments. I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, we just don't hear anything official. Like I, I can't find out anything official from YouTube as to what really the status is at the moment. The only thing I know is they're saying to us that by the end of April, <laughs> in another four and a half, five weeks from now, uh, they should be done. Uh, now, am I monetized then or between now and then? This afternoon, tomorrow, next week, two weeks from now, three weeks from now, or do I have to wait till the end of April? I have no idea. If it's the end of April, I will have not been monetized for two months and 10 days. Uh, just, just absolutely outrageous. But there's nothing I can do about it. I either, I either pack it up uh, or just stop broadcasting and let the, the, the channel just sit there and go somewhere else and try to build a platform elsewhere. Uh, but I feel that I've invested enough time and effort to build this channel, and I've dedicated a year of my life to build this channel up from August last year to August this year, uh, to grow this channel as far and as fast as I can, because after the first year is up, uh, then I'm going to begin the uh, the hunt for cruising, and I will be on cruise ships going forward, and you guys will know about it, and I would like to do broadcasts uh, from cruise ships. It might not be live on board, because I don't know if the internet speed will be good enough, but um, if I take a cruise and I, I come home with uh, <laughs> you know, three weeks worth of footage, I've got stuff to talk to you about. And away we go with live streams and everything else. If I can do a live stream on a shore resort, like on a shore location during a cruise, I'll do that and uh, and see what we can do. But anyway, that's all up in the air and that's to be determined. In the meantime, I'm working on a store. I'm working on a Traveling with Bruce store, uh, early days. Um, and I'm a one-man show. I'm working on putting together a, a Traveling with Bruce merchandise site for t-shirts and coffee mugs and uh, stickers and uh, cell phone holders and all kinds of stuff. And uh, as soon as I get that together, uh, you'll know about it because uh, I'll be holding it on the air. <laughs> you'll see it. I'll be wearing it. Um, and I'll, I'll keep all you posted as I go from there. And uh, I've had a few viewers comment, I can help you with a logo. I can help you with a logo. And I really, really appreciate that. Um, I've kept it all under my advisement. If I don't mention it, don't don't worry. It, it's in there. Uh, I've just got so much logistical work to do for uh, the store, the website work, the uh, the uh, production, the uh, handling of the orders, and oh, so there's just it's that's a whole other world, and I don't want to don't want to bore you with those details. So the only form of revenue that I have at the moment, there's uh, it's really just one. Well, there's two. Well, three, three. There's uh, Patreon, where you can sponsor me for a monthly contribution of three bucks, 10 cents a day on Patreon. Uh, or uh, number two would be a PayPal donation uh, going to my homepage on the top corner, which I think is uh, the, maybe this corner. Uh, there's a PayPal logo. And if you put your cursor over it, it'll say donate on it. You click on that and you can send me any amount you want. I, 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 it, it's up to you. Uh, or the third one is Super Chat, which is during my live streams right here, where on the um, on your phones or on your laptops or on your on your uh, tablets, there's a dollar sign beside where you're typing information uh, messages to me. If you click on that, uh, YouTube will uh, accept a donation to my channel, uh, and it'll show up on this screen live 
uh, in front of everybody and and uh, any amount is great. Anyone that sends me $10 US or more, either through PayPal up there or through Super Chat, uh, has their choice of any one of these items behind me here. I've got necklaces of probably 75 different pro teams available from NFL, MLB, base basketball, hockey, and some colleges. And over here, I have a ton of medallions, sports medallions available. Uh, and you're welcome to, to your choice of any one of these items for a $10 donation. Give me 20, you can have two, uh, and, um, and away you go. So a lot of you know that, so I won't bore you with that information, but I thank any and all who are helping. And for those of you who've been sending me $2 donations and $3 donations and $5 donations, uh, I thank you time and time again. Uh, the, the joke around here is that this is Costco money for Bruce and his, uh, and his missus, uh, Mrs. Traveling with Bruce, the woman that looks like Jennifer Aniston, uh, but you've never seen her. Uh, we are going to Costco this Saturday. <laughs> so after the show on Saturday, once we get off the air, we're heading in the car to Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, and I will be getting myself a chicken bacon. She's going to get herself a hot dog because she loves those Costco hot dogs. And if there's enough room, we'll get ourselves a, uh, a very, very Sunday as well. So <laughs> the myth is reality that he doesn't, he doesn't just talk the talk on Costco. He walks the walk on Costco. And Saturday, we're going shopping. <laughs> so we need grocery money. <laughs> Any of you folks in the mood, uh, by all means, send me some grocery money. Okay, now I'm going to say hi to the gang here, which I do every day. Again, those of you who are watching live or, or watching tonight, tomorrow, who've never seen the show before, I interact with my viewers. And I invite you to, uh, if you're live, I invite you to say hi to me. If you're not watching live, I invite you to say hi to me on my comments below after this video airs because it becomes a regular video in my channel. And uh, you can say hi to me all you like and, uh, and tell me, uh, you know, are you a newbie to cruising? If you have any questions, Fire them in now live or send them to me in the comments. I'll be more than happy to respond to you and uh, help you out any way I can. Make your cruise as comfortable as possible and enjoyable as possible. And I'm going to say hi to Tommy Eaton, who I think has set a new record. Um, it may not be Tommy's new record, but I think it's a new record uh, overall because I post this uh, notification of live uh, stream. I post it be between one and five hours before I go on the air because it's something I have to do. And it's a notification to everybody, and everybody gets an email that Bruce is live today at 5 o'clock. Tommy was on here at uh, 14 minutes before airtime <laughs> saying hi. <laughs> That's a new record. So uh, welcome, Tommy Eaton, 76 and sunny in Jacksonville, Florida, he's telling me. And that's an improvement uh, over the last uh, week or so because I know he cooled off a bit down there, as did a bunch of the Floridians I've been uh, been talking to. So welcome back, Tommy. Uh, Peter Heckham is also here, a beautiful 81-degree day here in Tarpon Springs, Florida today. Uh, we're finally getting back to beach weather. Are you ever? Uh, ideal beach and cruise weather, I will say. Uh, Richard uh, Kormaski is also here today. Uh, he was in nine minutes before airtime. 50 degrees Fahrenheit in Philly. Getting warmer every day. A little better, a little better. Overcast. Uh, the Hopefully blizzards are gone. We'll, we'll cross our fingers for that. Uh, Marlenia is here. Um, hi from Aurora, Colorado. 46 and cloudy. So meltage of the snow is happening today. Hope it'll continue for you. Welcome, uh, welcome back. Uh, Debbie Manuel signed in two minutes before airtime. Hi, Bruce, and everyone going to be 80, 80 with the sun in Northern California today. That is the warmest probably of the year. That's got to be the warmest temperature for 2018, I would think. Uh, this is fantastic. Normally, Debbie's telling me it's, it's in the 50s, 55. Fantastic, Debbie, one of my most loyal supporters. Thank you so much for, for all your help and uh, dedication to the channel and welcome back again. Uh, Jim Thomas is here, uh, kind of a new regular. Uh, welcome Jim, uh, 81 in Redding, California. Uh, hi Bruce, hey gang, 81 in Redding, nothing wrong with that, that's all right. Cam Wilson, hey everybody, he's here. Uh, Loves to travel is here, 56 here in Kansas. That means if there's snow, it's melting fast. Uh, Lady Luck is also here, hi everybody, how you doing there? Um, <laughs> See, I think this handle uh, is C I C. I, I always call it Cy Cy Child, but I think it's I think it's Cichlid. I think Cichlid Keeper is here today. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna try that. And uh, 76 Fahrenheit in Tequesta, Florida. Bruce, did you did you get my email? And I did. And I thank you very much. Uh, uh, Cichlid Keeper is here, and welcome uh, back. I know you've been here the last couple of days. And it's good to have you here again. Uh, 76, you really can't complain about that temperature. That's that's up bad. It's on the edge of being perfect. 
<laughs> straight on the edge, right on the edge. Awesome stuff. Uh, Richard Kornmaski saying, uh, hey, lady, Wendy Thompson's here. Hi, Bruce. Hi, everyone. 55 and overcast. Loves to travel saying cruises are like tattoos. You get one and then you want more. Uh, and I, I am tattoo-less. Never been tattooed. Never going to get tattooed. No tats for this guy. Just not my style. But hey, whatever turns you on. Silo is here. Hey, Bruce. Seattle is 52 for the high, 44 for the low, partly cloudy. Uh, 213 days till I am on the bliss. 213 days. Fantastic. Uh, that's, what, seven odd months from now. Oh, man. Uh, seven months. Such a wait. Such a wait. But it's happening. Uh, your weather and my weather, very similar right now. We're in the same temperature range, I think. Uh, Wes Morrison is, is saying hi to me. Hi, Bruce. 73 here in New Braunfels, uh, Texas, recovering from heavy rains. Isn't that something? Um, Scott Batchley. Hi, Bruce. Back again. Nice in Ventura. 69 degrees and a wonderful day. Boy, that is great. Fantastic. And then Richard... Uh, Corn Maskey saying, we were in the rainforest and these older women complained about the amount of rain we were having as both my wife and I were in parkas. <laughs> Hello. We were in the rainforest. <laughs> you know, the thing about the rainforest, you know, the inconvenience of it is that it rains almost every dang day. I mean, what is it with this rainforest and this nonstop everyday routine with the rain, but you know, I gotta say, the vegetation is sure lush around here. Don't, don't you think it's sure? Wow, you know, green everywhere and uh, real lush. But boy, gosh, it sure is wet <laughs> and humid. Uh, have you noticed that too? It's humid in the rainforest all the time, but boy, it sure looks nice and lush. Boy, I'll tell you that. Oh, man, <laughs> Silo is saying, uh, while on a van tour van tour of Bonaire, a lady said, why is it so hot here? Why are there so many cactus? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Why is it that cactus and snow just generally aren't, you know, a normal thing? Like, you know, when you go to, <clears throat> you go to uh, Squaw Valley in California, you know, California's got cacti all over the place. So how come on the top of the ski run in Squaw Valley, there aren't any cacti up there? What's with those cacti? They're, they're kind of picky. Yeah. 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 Warm weather and cacti. Oh, huh. right. <laughs> That's great. Wendy Thompson, uh, we were in Amsterdam to get on the riverboat. Uh, we stopped for pizza. Uh, mine was great. Hubby got a slice of uh, fish pizza. The look on his face at first bite slash last bite. Now we laugh about it. <laughs> I guess the old herring pizza isn't for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fish on a pizza. I, I, uh, yeah, that's a tough sell for me. Uh, oh, yeah. Fr shrimp. Now, shrimp on, you know, in certain circumstances, shrimp on a pizza. Okay, I can go with that. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe some, uh, maybe some, uh, oh, what is the other topping I don't mind on a pizza? Uh, oh, um, it'll come to me. Like after the show, uh, but uh, yeah, like uh, out and out fish. No, oh, no, <laughs> oh, uh, that's that's funny. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler. Hello, everybody. Cool and rainy in Virginia. Welcome, Mark the Lost Traveler. How long are you going to be up there? Uh, you're visiting. I think you're visiting family, right? Because uh, normally you're down in uh, Orlando. Uh, Samantha Farmer, um, you you can on what is that? Oh, I can go live on Royal Caribbean with their fast internet. Boom. That's a boom, it's called. Fantastic. Yeah, I, I have this feeling, uh, Samantha and everyone else, that going forward, uh, not too long from now, even later this year, most uh, large cruise lines um, will have uh, been, will are, are now and will be very much into modernizing their entire fleets with upgraded uh, Wi Fi, very high upgraded, where it's, in a, it's basically available uh, wirelessly. Anywhere on board, you no longer have to go to the internet cafe anymore to sit in front of a desktop computer. Uh, you can just use your phone or use your tablet or bring a laptop on board, and the speeds will be quite good. Uh, I do anticipate that to be global because of the uh, the uh, positioning satellites that are that are up there. Uh, it's amazing the um, the speed of this technology and the uh, the um, Availability of this technology, how it's coming—it's fantastic. Uh, as a matter of fact, I read—I uh, read an interesting article today 
uh, about um, a digital nomad. This is in Forbes magazine. I caught it online. And this individual was born in Germany, but lives in Cape Town. And uh, he graduated from uh, university from his studies, and he um, got his first job, uh, sort of being a, 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 a virtual, well, like a virtual assistant. I guess he was like a, a sales assistant or second kind of assistant, but it was all online. And the office he was in, um, you know, he could go to the office and work there, or he could just work from home. It didn't matter because the boss uh, could tell if he was working or not by the production he had from his. Uh, from his uh, online uh, you know, site, from the company's online site that he was obviously on. And he would handle uh, customer issues and, and uh, you know, look after them. But this guy quickly figured out, I don't need to be in an office. As a matter of fact, gee whiz, I don't need to be in Cape Town. I don't need to be anywhere. Uh, I can be everywhere, actually. So uh, he figured out that he could become a digital nomad and he could be working off of his computer wherever there was internet. Now, when he started, this was a number of years ago, and, and it was still spotty as to where you could get high quality, reliable, high speed internet. But those days are quickly changing because there's, like I said, these satellite systems are, are becoming more sophisticated. The prices are coming down for this service uh, compared to what it was 10 years ago it was just unthinkable, the, the, the cost of doing it through a satellite system. Anyway, this guy, uh, he's, he's gone through a couple of different jobs, but he is, he is, in effect, a digital nomad. And he loves spending time on cruise ships, <laughs> a lot of time on cruise ships. And uh, he organized a conference for digital nomads. And he put the word out because he's, he's part of like a chat group and, and this kind of thing. And he's been to a few conferences in the past where digital nomads will kind of come to a city and, and, and get together have a conference for a week or so, and then scatter out back out where they go, wherever they come from. Well, he put together a cruise, a digital nomad cruise on a repositioning cruise from Spain to, I believe it was Rio, uh, no, to Sao Paulo, maybe Brazil, down to Brazil. I thought that was a brilliant idea. It's brilliant because the, the cruise is cheap. Uh, you, you got a 15-day repositioning cruise for cheap money because it's a repositioning cruise. Uh, and the digital nomads, the nomads, they, they don't care because the ship had on board high speed Wi-Fi. That was part of the reason he chose the ship. He obviously contacted the cruise line. He talked to them about the speeds of the Internet and he knew he was already on board cruise ships. He already knew what the speeds were like on board, it worked for him, and he figured it would work for his his posse. Well, 250 of them were on board this cruise, 250 digital nomads crossed the Atlantic all the way down to Brazil. And uh, they had a whale of a good old time and they were having daily uh, sessions to, to compare notes and, and uh, talk about being digital nomads, to be better at it. Fantastic, I found that just to be so fascinating and I'm so frustrated that I'm as old as I am uh, because if I were in my 30s, Oh my goodness! I'd be saying to the uh, to, to Mrs. Traveling with Bruce, my Jennifer Aniston lookalike wife, I'd be saying to her, "Honey, you know the two of us could become digital nomads. I could be doing YouTube full time, and, and you, you could be helping me do it, or or you could be doing something uh, uh, in your field uh, through the internet, and we could just you know, live wherever, whenever. What? Wow! You know, I cruise shipping uh, could do that for six months of the year. We could hang out in Palm Desert, California for some time, visit some relatives up here in Canada, get the hell out of here. <laughs> as soon as that cold weather shows, get out of here. Uh, so like a month in Canada. <laughs> wow, you know, like what a what a world that it's become. Like this is for, for digital nomads, my gosh, this is incredible. Anyway, I really enjoyed that article and it just got me all scheming away. Wonderful. Iskew Park is here. Hi, Bruce. It's Iskew in Thunder Bay, Ontario. Welcome back. It's five degrees uh, Celsius plus side. Melted all the snow we had yesterday. Fantastic. Keep it going. Welcome back. Pamela Jordan. Hi, Bruce and everyone. Mostly cloudy and 75 degrees Fahrenheit in Iva, South Carolina today. It was 51 yesterday. That's a 24 degree improvement. That's the right direction. This is awesome stuff. Fantastic. Uh, Mark, the lost traveler. How long is the drive to Costco? Two hours, 15 minutes from the front door right here to the parking lot in Costco. Two hours, 15 minutes. Beautiful drive. Really looking forward, looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> 
Um, I keep forgetting how to pronounce this name, but I'm going to say uh, Sea Keepers here. <laughs> we flew to Miami for a cruise, and our checked luggage flew to the to the Dominican Republic. <laughs> oh no! For some reason, it took five days for our clothes to find us in Grand Cayman. Oh man! Oh man! You got to be thinking, geez, thank. Hopefully, you had a uh, carry on. That you know, you and the missus had a carry on with at least something, but then of course uh, you've got the on board store either one or two on day what would have been day two or three I guess you had a, maybe a sea day or two you would have come to land and you could have done some shopping you know some underwear and <laughs> some t shirt or something oh man that's that's crazy that, it's insane uh, yeah flying to uh, Miami. Yeah, your luggage is in Dominican. You can laugh about it now, but it wasn't funny then. From the future is here. Welcome from the future. Back to MSC. Okay. Are uh, people having problems getting MSC to refund their deposits back? I had to contact my credit union and still waiting after saying it was done. Anyone else? That's a good question. Um, I know a lot of people uh, have canceled MSC Seaside Cruises. Um, a lot of folks are, are canceling through their travel agents. And of course, the travel agent then is handling that for the client. Um, and I don't know if there have been any problems there. Uh, if you're trying to book, if you book directly through MSC Seaside, you're now going to have to get that refund through them. Uh, and maybe this is the issue th this individual is having. I, I don't know. Um, I sure like to know if anyone else is having these problems and, and whether refunds have been easy to get. Um, because it's a toughie. This is uh, this has been such a, um, a PR disaster for MSC. Although they're fighting every way they can to uh, avert the disaster, the PR disaster. Uh, they're buying. I think they're buying advertising space. I think they're planting articles everywhere they can uh, to get press. You know, positive press. They're buying commercial time everywhere. A lot of us have seen it. We've talked about it. Uh, and the prices are dirt cheap uh, for a, a balcony. Four hundred and Thirty-five dollars. Now I don't know where that balcony is. I don't know where you know where on the ship is that balcony and how many. I, I, that I don't. Know. But it certainly it's not the yacht club. It's not you know the top end in the penthouse. But boy, if you can get a a, a a balcony in the near the front of the ship or you know higher up towards the back of the ship, but uh, I'm sure you'd be just fine up there. You'll have a great cruise because you're far away from the trouble spot. But uh, there's these other issues that have nothing to do with the rooms, right? Uh, they have to do with the uh, servicing and uh, and other issues that we've heard all about again and again and again. But anyway, I'd be curious to know if anyone else has had any problems with that. Nina Frank is saying, in fact, there is an early video. You're streaming it from a couch, and there's a woman uh, sleeping next to you. Looks nothing like you. Oh, Nina Frank is. Uh, Nina Frank had had mentioned that she saw a a, a a woman sleeping on the couch next to me. A little clip of a woman. She's saying it looks nothing like Jennifer Aniston. And and I I was saying to her uh, this is like on the on my comment section. Don't know if that was uh, that may not have been Mrs. Uh, Traveling with Bruce might have been a friend, <laughs> could have been an acquaintance of uh, of someone we know. You never know. How do you know? You know, was there a name tag on that person? Well, I don't think so. So I can't say for sure. Uh, there was no ID. Like you didn't see a license, you know, license or a passport with passport open, you know, on her chest or shoulder. Identifying who that was. So it could have been anybody. You just never know. Wes Morrison, love anchovies. Ah, yeah, anchovies. I wasn't thinking anchovies. I was thinking of, ah, uh, oh, Bruce, what is it? It's uh, it's um, not necessarily crab. Uh, scallops. Scallops. That's what I was saying. Scallops. Shrimp and some scallops. Nice and tender. Oh, that's nice on a pizza. Oh, that's nice. Uh, Mark the Lost Traveler. Hey, uh, 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 <laughs> Seelid. Uh, did you piss off the gate agent? <laughs> Sometimes bags get rerouted, man. I can tell you stories. Uh, yes, Mark, the lost traveler with American Airlines can tell us some doozies, I'm sure. Uh, yeah, you know, you just you look at the, the ticket agent the wrong way nowadays, and you never know where your bags are going to end up. Oh, man, I don't know. Uh, yikes. Uh, Peter Heckema, I want to get some info on the Norwegian Bliss. I want it, he said. I want it to get some info on the Norwegian Bliss. So I Googled Bliss Cruises. <laughs> a Bliss Cruise website came up, which was for a clothing optional cruise. 
So watch what you're booking. <laughs> yeah, sometimes these all-in cruises are uh, not all-in. <laughs> it's all out. They're all-out cruises. Uh, you got to watch out for those all-out cruise packages uh, because there might be a lot more out than you're thinking <laughs> and that you're bargaining for <laughs> either for yourself or whom you are with. Uh, yeah, there are certain... There's some of these all-out cruises you may not want to be on uh, for, you know, for retina, retina damage. You know, you, you burn the retinas out. You don't want to hurt yourself. <laughs> oh, my. Tammy Ray, uh, good afternoon, everyone. 39 degrees in, in Calgary, 39 Fahrenheit in Calgary, and it's ugly there. It's going to get worse from what I hear. Tammy Ray uh, laughing out loud. Not good, Peter. Not, not good. Uh, Richard Karmaski, Peter, that means you don't have to pack much for the cruise. Laughing out loud. That's right. Pack light. Uh, everything on the carry-on. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly don't want to go on an Alaska cruise uh, on, on one of those. You don't want to be no. You don't want to go there. No, you don't want to look at icebergs and 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 uh, glaciers melting into the sea. No, no. You remember George Costanza on on uh, Seinfeld? There's shrinkage. You know, shrinkage. Got to avoid the shrinkage. <laughs> Uh, Sylvia's here. Hello, everyone. 73 and cloudy. Very nice. Greensboro. It sure is. 73 today. The weather up that East Coast has really improved. It's slowly coming to Philadelphia where Richard is. Uh, so good to see that happening in South Carolina, North Carolina. Fantastic. Uh, Samantha, uh, uh, some farmer saying, Bruce, we have a few in our group, Digital Nomads, that will live all year long on a cruise ship. Fantastic. Uh, 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 Lid is saying, I know better than to uh, piss off airline staff. <laughs> my, enough would, my wife would not allow that. The woman is dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Be on your best behavior at the airport in front of everybody. Absolutely. Uh, Peter Heck, only if you are inclined that way, Richard. And Tammy, uh, Tammy is saying, Samantha, how many people have you gotten to join your group? Samantha saying, Tammy, over 100 so far. But a lot of those will not commit and pay when the time comes. Working on a better website now with more info. Uh, Tammy Ray, until I retire one day, I could never commit either, uh, although winning a lottery might speed the process up. Sure. Um, Silo, looking at the uh, Queen Mary website, maybe we will get a room there before our uh, N Los Angeles NCL Bliss trip. Has anyone stayed on the Queen Mary? I have. I have. Looks like it would be fun before heading out to sea. Yeah, it, it, it is a it is a great experience. It's a it's a time machine. You're on a time machine uh, uh, for in an era of your parents or before. Uh, my parents uh, came to Canada from uh, from Germany after the Second World War. My dad emigrated in 1952, which was the earliest uh, you could as a German national. Uh, I think it was uh, five to seven years after the war before uh, German citizens were allowed to immigrate to uh, Canada and I think the USA. And uh, the ship that he was on, uh, the Queen Mary was on the seas at that time in 52. Uh, but uh, he didn't have that kind of money. Uh, even in steerage class on the Queen Mary, never, never could he have afforded that. Um, and so he was on a, uh, he was on a steamship that, that was uh, what we would refer to as sort of a discount cruise line. <laughs> discount transatlantic steamer cruise line. Famous for bringing um, immigrants over, of course, and and uh, and um, uh, cargo, of course, in the hold below. Um, so he would have been in third class, and uh, but even so, um, stories that I heard uh, that he would tell, um, he didn't talk much about that first cruise, not very much. But he told me that uh, in those days uh, there were such strict, such tight and stringent currency controls in place for travelers that. If you were immigrating from Germany out, um, you couldn't take anything of value with you other than, you know, the clothing you had um, to, to uh, otherwise you had to pay like a serious tax. But in the case of cash, you were forbidden to take cash with you. I think he was allowed the equivalent of five Canadian dollars. Um, but my, uh, my father's uncle, so that would be his mother's brother, uh, he uh, gave him five additional dollars and those that five dollar bill was sewed into the lining of his jacket that he would wear all the time 
So he actually had $10 on him when he landed in Canada in 1952. Now, 10 bucks in 1952 would be the equivalent of maybe $100 today. So, you know, got you around a little bit. Um, but he was uh, supposed to land in, uh, in uh, Montreal, which he did. And the, uh, he got off the steamship and uh, he was supposed to go to the, um, uh, in the, train, uh, to the main train station. And in the main train station was the wire office and also a, an office where you could uh, receive or send money by, uh, by telegram, by wire. Um, he uh, got there uh, and he landed on the May long weekend. The Monday he landed, it was on a Monday, it was a holiday. He didn't know that. Uh, he, he had no idea. How would he know? So he comes to uh, to the to the counter. There, there's no one at the counter. Dark. It's closed. <laughs> holiday. Statutory holiday in Canada. Uh, the ticket agents are open. They're, 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 you know where you can buy a train ticket because the trains are running. And so he's talking to uh, one of the ticket agents. He's trying to find somebody who can speak German because he can't speak a word of English. And he finally found someone who could sort of help him. And and they said oh, it's closed today. today. Today's a holiday. Closed today. So he. He interpreted that uh, it was supposed to be his sister who lived in Sudbury, Ontario. She was supposed to wire him uh, $50, $50. Uh, was like 500 today um, to, uh, to, you know, get him, get him up to Sudbury. Cause he had a ticket. He had a train ticket all the way to Winnipeg, the middle of Canada, uh, <laughs> geographically the middle. And um, uh, he was upset. He was, he thought that his sister had stiffed him. <laughs> <laughs> she had purposely not sent the 50 bucks and here he is stranded in Canada with 10 bucks and he's getting on a train and he's going to Sudbury. So he was, uh, he was eating thin. Like he was, he was, you know, he bought a sandwich and that'd be the whole day. And he had to go now on a train and a train ride to Sudbury and, uh, would take him, I think two days to get to Sudbury. So by the time he got to Sudbury, the train would stop along the route and it stopped in Sudbury. And his sister is on the platform waiting for him to get off the train. He's not, no brother. Where's my brother? Where's my brother? Well, she, this gal, you, you, you couldn't stop this person. She, she was like a bull in a china shop. She just barged past the, past the conductor and went on the train and looked for him. She walked down every rail car and found him sitting in his chair with his slippers on, reading a book. He had no intention of getting off the train, even though he knew his sister was living in Sudbury. And she said, you're going to stay with us. For a while, he was going all the way to Winnipeg, and she confronted him, saying, "What's with you? What are you doing? Where you're here? Get the hell you get your shoes on and get your bags and let's go." And he's going, "I'm not going anywhere. You didn't send me my fifty dollars. Hell with you." <laughs> not a lot of love between brother and sister, anyway, but family. So uh, she said to him, uh, "What are you talking about? Uh, I sent the money. What you never picked it up?" And he's going, uh, "The office is closed." So uh, they quickly, the conductor was brought over. She spoke English. She talked to the conductor. The conductor told her the day he landed, uh, you looking at his ticket, that was the holiday Monday. The office was closed. He couldn't get the money until Tuesday. So that she told him. She said, look, it wasn't my fault. Uh, you landed on the holiday Monday. How the heck was I supposed to know? I just sent it there. Uh, you didn't get it. It's we're still waiting for you. And my dad still didn't want to get off the train. <laughs> so finally, my sister convinced the conductor to convince him that if he got off the train in Sudbury, that the ticket was an open ticket. He could always use the remainder of that ticket to catch a later train the next day, the next week, the next month to Winnipeg. The, tr the ticket was okay. You're not going to lose it. Or you can cash it in. Anytime you can cash it in for the balance of what it was worth from here to from Sudbury to Winnipeg. Well, that convinced my dad enough to go, all right, fine. I'll get off the train with my sister. So that's how he ended up in Sudbury, Ontario. And uh, the year the year after that, my mother arrived uh, in Sudbury, Ontario. And uh, about a year and a half after that, <laughs> guess who arrived? Sudbury, Ontario, 1955. This guy. So uh, interesting little story. I thought it was a little tangent there. But uh, those are the days uh, when uh, we didn't have credit cards. We didn't have ATM machines. We didn't do uh, the uh, the instant um, uh, you know the instant communications uh, where we could just uh, uh, you know uh, get get money wired to us on a on an email. Are you kidding me? Uh, unbelievable. So this Queen Mary to get back to the Queen Mary for a second. 
<laughs> that ship was at sea in 1952 and lasted until 68, 69. Uh, but in those days, the Queen, the, the Queen Mary was uh, was the uh, the high end, the high end cruise line, uh, you know, like a six star line, and so you paid you paid a lot more money to be on that cruise ship. But for my dad to be in third class on the ship he was on, vast improvement for his life. Uh, he said, "I ate like a king. I ate this third class passenger food. I had had food like this since I was a kid because the war had happened." And after the war, Germany was starving. Germany, you didn't you didn't order a steak in Germany. Are you kidding me? You didn't buy steak at the butcher. Are you kidding me? Uh, it, it, that, that there's no such no no. The steak was for lawyers and presidents of companies. Uh, unthinkable to even have uh, anything like that. But on the ship, uh, they were fed royally. Uh, as far as my dad was concerned, he gained weight on the cruise. From Germany to uh, to Canada, he hadn't hadn't had food like that. But once he got to my sister, his sister's house, to his sister's house in Sudbury, from then on, he gained weight. <laughs> Every year he gained weight. He wasn't a skinny little runt anymore. Uh, I think he was about 160, 70 pounds, maybe maybe 160 pounds when he got to Canada. And uh, shortly, within a year or two, uh, he was settling into 180 to 200 and stayed there for the rest of his life. Uh, it was all good. <laughs> Canada's got food, no doubt about that. Uh, so yeah, take the uh, take the opportunity to go on the Queen Mary, spend a night or two, and go on that time machine. Uh, you'll uh, you'll see all kinds of great uh, uh, displays. Half the boat is a museum; the other half is a hotel. Uh, you can walk the whole ship, see it all, explore it all, get private tours on it. You're gonna love it. I, I'm sure you're gonna love it. Great for kids too. If you want to show children what the life what life was like between 1930 and 1960 on on a ship, oh man, this is this is a great excursion. It really is. Rather than a one hour tour, spend a couple of nights and get them really into it. Really get them into it. They'll they really understand. Wow, this is there's so many similarities to today's world, but also not so many similarities. And now they realize, oh, this is how you did this. What we do today with a click click click. You did this way 50 years ago when mom and dad, when grandma and grandpa were young. This is how the world was like. It's a great idea. Uh, Tammy Ray is saying, uh, we actually found it hot when we went on our Alaska cruise last summer. We were surprised. Uh, yeah, well, uh, you know, watch your clothing. Mark Lachavar, I have last year on the, uh, I have last year on the Queen Mary, uh, 75 bucks, had a great time. It was like going back in time, the time machine, exactly, to Debbie. Emmanuel, tell me what month did you cruise Alaska? Uh, <laughs> um, Richard Kormaski, Samantha, there is a ship you can do it on called The World. Oh, this is full-time living. Uh, also, they are building a second one for full-time cruising. Very expensive, though. Tammy Ray, Salo, I'm thinking of doing that as well. Maybe take a ghost tour. Uh, Tommy Eaton, too bad you can't go back on prices for the Queen Mary. Laugh out loud. Yeah. Uh, I was looking up a website the other day, cruising in 1910. Uh, they had prices in $1910, and then they converted them to $2012. I think it was just a, it's a website from a few years ago. I found that very interesting. A uh, first-class cruise from uh, New York to Southampton or the other way back, $2,000 today, one way, uh, in first class. Um, in, uh, in second class or tourist class, would have been about uh, 800 today's dollars to a thousand, so kind of similar in a in a roundabout way. I mean, if you took a take a balcony room uh, in a repositioning cruise, 15 days, uh, yeah, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. But if you took a a, a, a Q, you know, Queen Mary two cruise with Cunard in July, um, balcony uh, about a thousand bucks for six days, kind of the same. You know, that's Upper second class, let's say uh, it's, you're not on the premium level, right? The suites, suites are even more. It's probably three grand today versus two grand back then, but it's five six days. Uh, amazing. Uh, Randy Lucas is here. Uh, um, hi all. Uh, hi Bruce and all. Beautiful and sunny here in Paradise, California. High seventy eight. Welcome, Randy. Tammy Ray uh, saying she was in Alaska in August. How nice and warm it was. Silo, my grandpa went over during World War II on the Queen Mary Fifth Rangers. He was nineteen. And he was not on what we call a luxury cruise. <laughs> uh, hammocks everywhere, 5,000 troops at least on a ship that would hold normally 1,800, 1,900 people. 
Uh, but we thank him for his service. Uh, Samantha Farmer, Richard Kornomaski, no way has to be on a big normal ship that has all the amenities and things to do. Plus that ship is millions to buy in. Uh, she's looking to live for about a 50 bucks a day full time. Um, Tammy Ray, um, you're welcome. We were on shorts and t-shirts the whole time. Uh, Richard Kornomaski, Samantha, you're looking at freighters. Uh, uh, you can do it long term for 50 bucks a day. <laughs> Uh, Debbie Manuel, hi Randy. Are you and Michelle uh, even sleeping at night? So close to your wonderful trip. I'm having trouble sleeping and I'm uh, 40, 94 days out. Um, Mark Lost Traveler saying, thinking of the bliss in June out of Seattle, seven days to Alaska. Samantha is, is talking about uh, the full time life with Richard. Uh, we're negotiating with Royal Caribbean on big ships with fast internet. Uh, the ship is the destination. Um, Tammy Ray, Mark, the view is beautiful. Uh, Silo, uh, whoa, we've tried to book a Queen Mary room for October. Said the Queen Mary is not available. Hmm, could be sold out. I don't know. Tammy uh, Ray, uh, full or is she being sold uh, Sold again? <laughs> uh, Peter, uh, a Royal Caribbean Oasis uh, class ships are the destination. Uh, there is so much to do on those ships. Looking forward to our Symphony of the Seas cruise in November. Oh, I'm sure you are. And that ship is all over the media right now. Uh, if you're looking on, uh, you enter Symphony of the Seas and hit Google search, you'll find every newspaper in Europe is covering it right now as if they've just discovered this thing uh, because uh, Royal Caribbean is pulling out all the stops right now. It's the inaugural kind of uh, month for this ship, and it's going to get all kinds of press in Europe because they're going to keep it in the Mediterranean for a little while, and eventually it'll work its way to the States, and we'll get all kinds of press again in the U.S. for its inaugural cruises out of the U.S. Wendy Thompson, if you want to stay in the Queen Mary, book it as soon as you can. Tommy Ray, I'm still way too far uh, to book Queen Mary. I won't be there until February 2020. Uh, Richard Karmaski, Samantha, good luck with Royal Caribbean. I would be surprised if at least 100 a night, uh, even long term. Uh, Silo, not sure, Tammy. I think I will call to see what's up. Uh, Samantha, Richard, uh, that is the power of the large group, paying for a full year all at once. Well, yeah, you know, you negotiate a deal like that. A volume deal for a long time. Uh, cruise lines will talk to you. They really will. Uh, all of them will talk to you, of course. A uh, couple of things uh, uh, Things uh, I've got going here. Um, a bit of news. Uh, St. Kitts um, out of the Caribbean. <clears throat> they are uh, going to receive a record number of cruise ships for 2017-18, this current season. They will have uh, 596 calls, cruise lines ships coming in to St. Kitts this year. They came out of the hurricane season relatively unscathed. They were lucky. They were south of the hurricanes. They went north and uh, just caused all kinds of havoc north of them. Uh, they had minor damage and were up and running in no time. They are now building a second pier in St. Kitts to accommodate Oasis class cruise ships. Not only Royal Caribbeans, 6,000 passenger monsters, but also the largest ships at sea from all cruise lines. Uh, they've seen the light. They know that uh, we've got to build a, an infrastructure scenario here to accommodate all the cruise line ships so that their biggest, most modern cruise ships will not skip this island. And on top of that, they are investing all kinds of efforts in shore excursions to uh, accommodate perhaps two 5,000 passenger cruise ships at a time so that you've got 10,000 passengers or more coming off the ships for excursions. They want to handle them all. And so St. Kitts has bought into the program that their economic future and success, a big part of it, can be from uh, Oasis-class ships and, uh, and uh, a ton of visitors. Now, they've set a limit for one and a half million passengers a year. And that's a little less than um, Cayman like Islands. They, they handle about 1.7 million or so. Uh, same with the St. Martin and St. Thomas. When they're up and running to full max, they're up to about 1.7, a little more like that. Uh, where St. Kitts kind of wants to keep it at 1.5 million. But what they're trying to say to the cruise lines is, we're building a second pier. And I think they can handle then four ships at a time because you can handle a ship on each side of the pier. And uh, they might be able to accommodate up to 15, 20,000 people in a day. Uh, that's quite an interesting uh, uh, development there. That's, that's serious investment by the country. They, uh, they, they are trying to eliminate tender 
uh, visits where you have to get off the ship and in, into one of the lifeboats and chug your way to the shore because there are days where it's windy and uh, too windy and too wavy for the cruise line to operate the tender uh, down to the surface. You're, you're going to be like a ping pong, a floating ping pong in a bathtub. All 200 passengers on the tender are just going to be sicker than dogs in no time. So if the cruise ship can dock right at the pier, even on a windy day, you can do it. You tie the ship down to the pier, and now people can just walk off the gangplank and head to shore. And all of those tours will be honored and will be taken. Because when it's a windy day, uh, if two or three cruise ships are stuck out at sea, they can't come in. You're talking 10,000 people that aren't coming in for those tours. They're not coming into the bars. They're not coming into the T-shirt shops. They're not coming in to buy ice cream. They're not coming to do anything. And the island is hurt economically feeling it. Uh, we're here with you build a pier for two million bucks, five million, whatever it takes. You build the pier, the ships will come right to your pier and the folks can walk right off. And you're guaranteed now probably 95% of all the scheduled visits will now happen. And it's big business. So that that's one piece of news I saw today from St. Kitts. I thought that was pretty interesting. Um, Lost Traveler, did you hear about the Norwegian Cruise Line's gratuities going up? Just uh, 50 cents more a day. Did hear about it last week or a week and a half ago. Uh, it, uh, it came and went. Uh, I'd heard that it was coming. Uh, Bob Hollis, hey, Bruce and everyone. Late to the party today. 78 and sunny in Atlanta. Spring is here. Yippee. Uh, Peter Heckema, uh, you're thinking about me. I thank you very much uh, for your Costco trip this weekend. Got my wife covered. Mrs. Traveling with Bruce can now get a hot dog and a soda at Costco. Uh, because Peter Heckema stepped in and threw us a couple of bucks. Thank you so much, sir, for your continued support. Really appreciate it. I need a chicken bake. <laughs> I, I need about a 3 or $4 donation to make it, uh, if anyone's got any sympathy for me. Otherwise, i got to watch her eat. <laughs> I'll take anything. Uh, Wendy Thompson, I got an email about tips going up, she said. Yeah, um, I, I talked about it about a week and a half ago. Uh, uh, that makes all the major lines now um, – together they've all done it over like a 90 day window uh when one does it they all do it a buck or so a day or something like that um it's not a big deal but it, it you know it's just a reality of the business um iskew park is saying on our last cruise uh, western caribbean we couldn't tender to grand cayman due to the rough seas and high winds yeah uh, i did a i was talking about that about maybe a month and a half ago where the one day was so bad that um what they ended up doing was uh the cruise ships went to the south side of the island because the winds were coming from the north rather than from the uh, from the east. Normally, the, the winds come from the east to the west and uh, and uh, go over Seven Mile Beach out to sea and head towards Mexico because Cayman is so far south that the trade winds are coming from Africa over to Mexico, where in Florida and North America, the trade winds are usually west to east. So in the case of Cayman, uh, for this particular day, the winds were from the north. It was a nor'easter, and that causes havoc in the Cayman. So the cruise ships, instead of trying to tender passengers into downtown Georgetown, uh, some of the cruise lines went to the south side of the island, and they were tendering passengers in from about a mile offshore, half a mile offshore, onto the shore, because down in the south side of the island, the island protected the shore from the winds, just like it would have had the winds been from the east on the west side. So passengers were being tendered in. All the cabs and all of the bus, tour buses, they all came to the south side. No big deal. It's like four miles away. And they picked passengers up from there and took them on their day trips. And off they went. <clears throat> so I don't know how pleasant it would have been for Stingray City that day. Uh, it would have been probably kind of choppy. I wouldn't have liked it. I wouldn't want it to be snorkeling in the, in the uh, harbor. In the is a Frank Sound, I can't remember the name, uh, but um, I'm not sure about Seven Mile Beach how calm it would have been either with a nor'easter, might not have been too pleasant. But at least for island visits, uh, going to downtown or the turtle farm or going up to a place called they call it hell, uh, would have been okay, a bit breezy, but still been all right. But yeah, a couple ships though that particular day didn't even bother trying the south side of the island, they weren't, they weren't doing it, so they kept the ships out at sea. For the day in international waters, kept the casinos running, and uh, called it a sea day and left it at that. Because that can happen. Silo, uh, just got off the phone with the Queen Mary. No rooms at the end of October because of Dark Harbor. It is a haunted house ship. 
thing they do. She said, check back once a month uh, to see if any rooms open up. So that's the special event that's going on. And they, yeah, they're, they're marketing that ship on, uh, in all kinds of ways. Very interesting silo. Thanks for that info. Tammy Ray, I have a question for anyone. Has ever stayed on a cove balcony? That'd be one of those lower, maybe restricted view balconies on the carnival. Uh, thinking of staying in one, but don't know if it would be uncomfortable on the second floor as I'm used to staying on the balcony on the seventh floor. So, um, well, the room itself, probably the, the actual room, probably just as roomy as any other balcony room as far as the inside goes. But on the balcony, you may not have the view that you're like. You might have a bit of a, a bulkhead over restricting part of your in access to the balcony and back into your room. Uh, but the price is probably probably right. Uh, they'll probably make it comfortable that way. Uh, so uh, uh, that's my two bits. Uh, see if anyone else has a comment on it. Mark, the Lost Traveler, another fun show. I'm heading out to dinner tonight, everybody. Uh, bye, Bruce. Say hello to Jennifer. Have a good one, Mark. Uh, Tammy Ray, en enjoy your dinner. Sean Johnson, the cruise we are taking this Sunday has Grand Cayman on the itinerary. <clears throat> Never been. I uh, hope there aren't any uh, uh, tender issues. Yeah, uh, weather-wise, it's not often that you can't get onto the sh onto the Grand Cayman shore. It's not often, but it's on occasion. Um, but uh, it's a good time. You want to do it. Uh, you know, get on shore at 8 or 9 o'clock. If you've got a tour, you got a tour. If you don't, don't worry about it. Uh, go on shore, and you can either just uh, schlep, schlep around downtown if you like, or you can always grab a cab. Uh, and get a ride, uh, you know, uh, somewhere in the island. If you're going with another couple, so it's like two of you, four of you, six of you, um, then you can rent like a, a one of the van taxis for like you know a couple of hours and just get a tour with the the driver will drive you around, show you around. You've got a number of options. Um, one of my, if it were me and my wife, uh, and we weren't going to rent a car because that's the expensive option, um, uh, we would, uh, I would consider. Um, uh, going up in a cab up to Foster's Food Fair, the grocery store up a little north of the Seven Mile Beach, uh, the public beach. Go in there into the grocery store and head for the salad bar. And uh, you can buy uh, buy the uh, buy, for every hundred grams, it's so much for the salad bar. You grab fresh fruits, you grab some watermelon, grab some uh, melon balls, you grab some salad and some breads and all that, and you put together a nice little picnic lunch from the grocery store. And then uh, 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 head across the parking lot to uh, uh, the rum shop, <laughs> the alcoholic store, and I'd pick up my Diet Coke. Of course, I'd buy it in the grocery store, but my wife would pick up maybe a small little Mickey of rum or something like that and pour a little Coke in with that and uh, head to the beach. Grant uh, Again, grab a cab, head to Seven Mile Beach, tell the cab driver to be back in two hours or three hours, whatever the time is, and now you're hanging out on the beach swimming and you're nibbling and you're refreshing. Having a wonderful time at the beach. There's a shower there. It's like an outdoor shower you can rinse off and throw your T-shirt back on and uh, get your flops washed off from the salt and the sand and uh, throw the garbage in the garbage cans provided into the cab, down to the uh, to the pier, back on the tender, back to your ship. That's your your tour, your day, and uh, take your sunscreen with you. And um, it costs you all of maybe 40, 50 bucks for the two of you uh, for the whole day, and you lived life at your pace fantastic now if you remember to bring a transistor radio with you like a little radio you can play a radio uh on the beach from the local radio stations and listen to the weather and the news of the day and whatever become an islander for a day it's always an idea uh you never know um let's see here uh, um Grand Cayman. Sean Johnson, very excited to check out stingrays turtles and dolphins there you go bob hollis do you or anyone watch the uh PTV webcams at some of these ports. NASA is fascinating to watch coming and going. Uh, you know, Bob, I don't. I, I just am so busy um, trying to do what I'm doing. Uh, time is precious, and I've just, I'm just constantly working the channel. But uh, that sounds pretty cool. That does sound pretty cool. Asylo Grand Cayman was great. Beaches are amazing. Tammy Ray, Stingray City was really fun. Had a Stingray eat out of my hand. Uh, Deanne, hi, Bruce. Uh, just got here because I'm so busy getting ready for our Transatlantic cruise to Barcelona, leaving on Tuesday, coming up. Fantastic. That's going to be great, the end. Silo, I like uh, uh, broad wave live cams. The Miami Harbor uh, is my favorite. There you go. Uh, there you have company. Sean Johnson, I think our plans uh, just changed. Great tip, Bruce. We'll absolutely take that advice. Well, there, there you go. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, don't you know if I'm if I'm off by ten bucks or something? Don't worry about it. I mean, who cares? Uh, if you can do it with like four people, it's great. It's just great. I mean, at the at the grocery store, you buy a bag of chips, a bag of cheesies, I mean your snacks or whatever you want, junk food. But I love that salad bar uh, because you can load up on this fresh stuff at, at, at what you want and just pay by the gram. They weigh it at the till, and uh, you're good to go. Good to go. They take American money there. They take credit cards. So don't worry about it. It's it's all very sophisticated, and they'll take good care of you. You'll be fine. Uh, that will be great. Um, and you know, you buy a Mickey of this or a Mickey of that, and you finish it because <laughs> you can't bring it on the ship. <laughs> you polish it up. Shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see, Silo, they also have a, a Mallory Square Key West Cam 2. I have seen that. Tammy Ray, yeah, Bob, yes, I like to watch the port web, port web cams myself. Uh, Richard, uh, when I went in Grand Cayman, don't forget to go to hell. Great rock formations and get a T-shirt and postcard to mail. Yeah, you can mail a postcard from the post office in hell. Yeah, they stamp it right there. Postmark from hell, absolutely true. Yeah, it's. It's a shtick, it, you know. Eh, once, yeah, you go see it once. Uh, I took I took relatives there a couple of times, you know. I'd wait in the car. <laughs> I, I saw it four times. I, I'll wait in the car. Uh, news, Carnival Horizon. Uh, the issue with the paint job has been resolved, apparently. The ship has been presented by the shipbuilder, uh, uh, Finn, uh, Finn Cantieri, uh, to Carnival Cruise Lines, officially. They've had a ceremony at the dock at the shipyard. 133,000 tons, 323 meters long, 4,000 passengers, and now Carnival will begin its inaugural festivities with its ship as well. So we're going to hear a lot about Carnival Horizon over the next week or two about its, you know, arriving kind of thing, right? Uh, to Jim Thomas, how do you find a show that you did a few days ago? I uh, tried, but I can't find it, uh, and Deb won't tell me what wants me to watch it. <laughs> All right, an easy thing to do is underneath my picture, underneath me, probably uh, here where the subscribe button is, there's there's my the title of my channel is there saying Traveling with Bruce. You click on that, all right? You click on it now or later. If you click on that, that'll take you to my home page, all right? When you get to my home page, uh, you'll have, um, uh, there'll probably be a video that'll pop up. It's like an introductory video I've probably done. And just above it will be a couple of tabs, one which will say uh, videos and then playlists about something like that. Hit the videos tab, hit that, and the page will change and you'll see in chronological sequence every video I've done from today or yesterday, the day before, the day before, going back. And, and it'll run down the page. And at the bottom of the page, if you haven't found it, you can hit more. You can literally scroll through every video I've ever made. Uh, but if you know what the title of it is, just look for the title until you find it. And then uh, click on the title and the video will play. That's how you do it. Okay. Uh, any more problems, let me know. <laughs> uh, Sean Johnson, uh, did Jim Zim apply? I haven't contacted Jim Zim. Yet. It's on my want to do list. Uh, I would really like to uh, love to do a collaboration with him. I uh, would love to do a collaboration on a live video, like a live show. That would be just awesome if he's interested. Uh, but uh, I gotta, I gotta, you know, gotta, gotta, you know, only ask once. You don't want to blow it, you know. So I gotta just gotta, gotta be careful. Samantha Farmer, do you know anything about Royal Caribbean Quantum Plus class of ship coming out next year? Uh, I heard something about that. Uh, I haven't got anything definitive yet, but I'm keeping my eyes and ears open. Um, I did hear uh, this morning, I heard that there's a possibility that Royal Caribbean may be basing the quantum of the seas, the actual quantum of the seas, out of Southampton uh, for the next year. But um, uh, I know Carnival always, like everyone else, they shuffle the deck all the time. They shuffle the ships around every couple of years. And there's a rumor that quantum might be going out of Southampton. Don't know. Jim Thomas, thank you. Okay, good luck, Jim, on that. Uh, other news for you. Um, and this one here... Um, I first saw this announcement this morning, and then I, I wasn't going to mention it. And then I read it again, and then I caught something that I wanted to talk to you about. And uh, here's my little take on this story. Uh, it has to do with the Sapphire Princess. Um, uh, Princess Cruises announced today or yesterday that the Sapphire Princess has come out of dry dock in Singapore. It was in dry dock for two weeks. So it wasn't like a, a major, major redo, but still, two weeks of dry dock. 
that's uh, 50 million bucks roughly of, of dollars spent on their cruise ship. That's a lot of work. Now, they uh, have announced that um, on the ship, they, they did a number of improvements in their retail floor for their retail offerings to get you to spend more cash. Uh, they upgraded their spas, uh, which no surprise, after five, six, seven years, they redo that every time. This is nothing new. This is just standard refurbishment of a cruise ship. But what they did on this, in this little announcement is something interesting. They claim to have added new club mini suites. That's the term they're using, club mini suites. And they come with VIP amenities um, and exclusive dining privileges. Now, this to me is the next phase of the upgrades that are coming. This is how uh, cruise lines are turning to airlines. Um, they're coming up with, uh, in the airline business, they came up with uh, first class seating, then business class seating. Of course, we've always had economy. Now we got premium economy in airplanes. So there's four classes of seating. So, you know, economy is steerage. Premium economy is what economy used to be, but, a, you know, a little, little about the same room that used to have 15 years ago. Business class is what first class used to be. And now it's business. And now first class is like, you know, a whole nother world. That's the airline world. In Sapphire's case and in Princess's case, and this is going to go, everybody's going to do it. This is not exclusive to Princess because remember, Princess is owned by Carnival. So if Princess is doing it, it's going to happen on Hall in America. It's going to ha happen on, on Carnival. It's going to happen then on Royal Caribbean if it's not already. And it's going to be on uh, Norwegian and everybody else, celebrity and everybody. Okay, so here's the deal. <clears throat> Club mini suites are basically balcony rooms. They're just balcony rooms that have now been reclassified and have been um, jazzed up with add-ons and i think what they're doing is they're probably going to offer you for you know so many dollars more you're going to be able to book this room you're going to get early boarding privileges you remember that which instead of you paying for that pass separately you now get that with this class of room uh you're also going to get a uh, enhanced specialty dining deal now as i've read it so far um you are going to the main dining room for dinner Okay, and the dining room holds 800 people or whatever the name out is. You're going to be given um, privileges for seating times because a certain portion of that dining room, a certain number of seats and tables is reserved for mini club suite travelers. Uh, the table is no different than anyone else's table, really. I mean, I can't see any big difference there, but they may have a cordoned off area in the dining room perhaps by the windows towards the back or to the side with a view maybe uh but here's the difference you get a different menu so you're in the same dining room as everybody else but your menu is different than the menu of the others and your waiters know it and they're going to serve you on an enhanced menu in the same room and this is the beginning of the beginning of the beginning of this constant change. There might be privileges offered you for spa privileges. There may be uh, opportunities presented to you where you can go to the sanctuary upstairs where they, uh, they have the loungers up there and the, uh, the waiters uh, with cabanas and all that and a private adult only area. All these little add-ons are going to be added. Now, I took a quick peek just for... For giggles, uh, poops and giggles, I call it. I went to uh, vacationstogo.com and I entered in a cruise this summer in Northern Europe where this ship is going to be based out of Southampton. So I wanted to see, well, how much is a, how much is a cruise on uh, the old Sapphire Princess now that she's been refurbished? How much is a balcony versus a uh, mini suite balcony? Uh, I'm kind of curious. And uh, looking at vacationstogo.com, you know, home of uh, pretty good prices. I went on to the website on uh, Princess's own website, took a look to confirm, double confirm, and just see if there's anything different. And I'm um, looking at like uh, June, July cruises in Northern Europe, which right now I'm telling you, I don't care who you go with. They're expensive anyway. Everybody's charging a premium price 
to go on a northern European cruise in June, July. You will pay dearly for that, as opposed to a uh, top of the season, say, February cruise in the Caribbean. Much cheaper to cruise the Caribbean as a North American than to be uh, in northern Europe in uh, June, July. Anyway, <laughs> excuse me. So on vacationsgo.com, I'm finding balcony cruises, regular balcony, for between $1,500 and $2,000 a week per person, plus taxes and fees, plus tipping, and then, you know, specialty dining, you pay extra. So it's expensive. I mean, this is, you know, I'm thinking two grand each, there's 4000 plus your taxes and fees, add another four or 500 for that for the two of you. Tipping will be 20, 30 bucks a day, 2200 more. Uh, and then especially dining, if you're going to take it, there's going to be more. So, yeah, five, six thousand. Um, mini suites on the website for Princess Cruises, fifty-eight hundred. <laughs> I'm laughing. Fifty-eight hundred dollars for a mini suite. It's the same dang room. It's the same dang room uh, with a few add-ons. You're not getting three. This is per person. You're not getting three grand extra in anything. There's no way. So I went back to vacationsgo.com and I'm looking at suites. They're quoting suites 2300 2500 a week per person. And I'm thinking to myself, I, no, thank you. I think I'll just go on a Viking cruise. I can go on a Viking ocean cruise with 930 people. I'm getting a balcony room. I'm getting alcoholic drinks served at lunch and dinner standard. Anyway, in the cheapest balcony room they've got, no specialty dining extras. It's all inclusive. Uh, wh what am I doing this for? Why Why would I do this? Summertime on a Princess Cruise Line ship? Are you kidding me? You know how many kids are going to be on that ship? How many children are going to be running around that cruise ship because they're going to be with grandma and grandpa or mom and dad or whatever? No, thank you. I'll take the Viking Cruise Line and I'll pay $2,500 a piece. For the balcony there, I get it all. No extra charge, no extra fees. Taxes, of course, and I think tipping's included. If it is, it doesn't matter. Uh, and 930 passengers, uh, wow, quiet, refined, short excursions included. I mean, come on. So I was shocked. I, I was really surprised at that. And I, I, I'm going to have to keep my eye on this uh, going forward because I'm convinced that all cruise lines are going to play this little game because we've noticed with carnival as you a lot of you've been telling me already and we've noticed they have that fun to the faster to the fun pass early boarding early booking privileges early disembarkation privileges helpline uh, exclusive helpline at the help desk just like at the airport you know first class business class everybody else get in line talk to someone uh princess has announced uh, their own little pass at the, on the ruby princess now they're trying to they're trying it uh, but now here they built it. They built this package of club mini suites. Um, I'm I'm really curious how this is going to go over. I I really am. I I get it. The cruise lines are booming right now. Uh, they're going at capacity. Almost all cruises, on average, um, the numbers are up. Uh, the 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 person the passenger count is up across the cruise business. The Fares are going higher. The onboard expenses are getting higher. The short excursions are going higher. So we're those of us in the know are being challenged to find deals, but we still find them because we know what we're doing. And for you newbies out there, follow us to stay on top of this. But don't get sucked in to buy a mini suite upgrade for a thousand or eight hundred a person more. Eight hundred dollars each more, sixteen hundred bucks. What does it get you? Early boarding privilege to your room? I don't think so. Uh, the ability to, to get a couple of specialty meals? Heck, for $1,600, my wife and I will eat like kings and queens. Thank you very much. Additionally, on top of the food we're already getting, don't need to do that. Spa package? I, I don't see one specifically detailed here, but it's free on board. Well, is it maybe not free? There's a, there's a $100 a week access fee into the spa thing. And I can tell you right now, I'm not impressed with Princess's uh, access to uh, the steam room and the, and the sauna uh, in the men's side or the women's side, but men's side for me. Uh, not impressed. I don't think it was any extra. I think if I needed to go into the aroma spa, it was extra. And uh, I wasn't going to pay 100 bucks or 150 bucks for the week to go into one extra steam room and then the ceramic loungers. 
was too much money for what they were offering me. No other uh, perks. I had to go to the same locker room as everybody else to take my shower and change into, in and out of my clothing. The worst, the worst. It it and the Royal Caribbean Explorers uh, Spa. Hey, eh. uh, Norwegian, great. All America, great. Really enjoyed it. So this deal, this mini suite, I, I don't see the value yet. I'm looking. I'll be watching for it. And any of you out there run into it, uh, run across it, or you know someone that takes it, let me know. I'd be really curious to know. Uh, but to, to me, I, I'm kind of going this, this, this. Uh, no, there's nothing here. I don't, I don't quite, I don't quite get it. We'll have to see how this plays out. Now, uh, comments, comments, comments. Uh, <laughs> uh, the deals from years ago not so common. Come on back, come on back. Um, Okay, Jim, how do I find a show that you did a few days ago? I talked about that. Okay, Jim's in reply. We'll talk about that. The deals from years ago are not so common. Iskew Park, a bad story with Disney. We had one large bag totally destroyed when it was transferred on the ship. They had duct tape holding it together when it arrived to the room. No problem till we had to leave four days later. <laughs> they fought for hours, and they didn't need to replace it. After a lot of screaming, they replaced it with almost the same size bag. Well, yeah, you, sometimes you just got to stand up to them and just give them hell. Uh, you, you know, they ruin it. They ruin it. I mean, come on. Or Samantha Farmer, Royal Caribbean already does that with Star Class. Okay, eat in room for many restaurant. Every day they come to your room and make you custom drinks. You have front row everywhere. Yeah, uh, that's, like I said, this is, this is I, I, maybe an iteration of that. It might be different. It might not be exactly the same, but uh, thank you for that comment. Steaming bean, I could care less about seating times, like to eat at seven or eight, uh, whereas many North America eat are at five. Yeah, a steaming bean, it's all up to you. You know, uh, that's the beauty of a cruise ship. Uh, in most cases nowadays, uh, there's always the buffet or there's always a, a quick a quick eat place, uh, you know, on the deck by the pool or, uh, you know, head to the restaurant. And if you have to wait 15 minutes for a table, you wait 15 minutes for a table. I mean, whatever. Whatever works for you. Samantha, a farmer at Butler, uh, is with you 24-7. Everything is included. They get you a gift uh, that you think uh, you'll like and so on. Yeah, uh, this this deal, Samantha, is uh, pricey, as as we all know. Samantha, is uh, Star Class the giant suites? Uh, good question. Uh, Samantha saying uh, uh, some uh, some others are not so much bigger, but have uh, better stuff like custom beds. Nina Frank, Bruce, time to organize our meet and greet cruise. It's time, she's saying. It's time. First, we have to decide which ship we want, then uh, then checking group rates on that ship. I vote for the bliss. Well, I'll get back to you, Nina. I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet. Sorry, I'm just not ready. When I'm ready, you'll know, and then we'll go from there. Sean Johnson, uh, on all ships, I I'm not familiar. Um, uh, Sean is asking about this. Uh, this is on most Royal Caribbean, maybe all. Uh, I know they've rolled this out and have been rolling it out. Uh, Samantha, Sean Johnson, uh, only Oasis and Quantum. There you are, on the two so far. Sean Johnson, ah, thanks for the info. I was on Oasis twice, but I've never heard of Star Class. Heather Parsons, hi, Bruce. The mini suite state rooms are much bigger than the regular balcony rooms. Thank you, Heather, for clearing this up for me because reading the announcement today, I couldn't uh, I couldn't see it. I couldn't find it. Uh, we'll get more on this. Thank you. Steamy Bean, we need another recession and a couple of Christmas apps to get those prices lower. <laughs> well, there's always that. Uh, yeah, there's always that. Misery brings deals, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Bob Hollis, I've uh, bought the uh, Fast of the Fun package on Carnival. Not worth it, he said. Not worth it. I can wait an extra half hour to board and get a tender or advanced dining option. For you, I hear you. Uh, I have had a viewer say to me, uh, a mom and dad, couple of kids, uh, was really worth it for us uh, because of the the kids. But uh, hey, to each his own. I, I wouldn't buy it either, not me personally. Uh, Heather Parsons. Uh, then the club mini suite is the step above the mini suite. Okay, uh, Samantha Farmer. The steaming bean. Uh, just go, <laughs> just go on the MSC Seaside, Seaside super cheap. Yeah, if you want a deal, uh, steaming bean. She's saying uh, MSC. Well, we're all talking about that. The uh, faster the fun is mere money grab. Uh, there you go, Silo. Uh, we are. We are hating again. Uh, those of us who like to stay in the haven and the like, oh, God, are we hating again? Uh, you know, to each his own. Um, uh, no no BC line shirt today. No, sir. Wendy Thompson, where is that Costa captain when you need him? Where is that guy? Uh, you know, uh, what what wing is he in right now? <laughs> and uh, Iskew Park, has anyone taken a Viking River cruise? Good question. Wondered. How they were, uh, do the rivers smell due to European heavy use and waste? Very good comment. Um, I read something years, years ago 
uh, because I, you know, I'm a, I've been a Cruise fan for a long time. And I read a few years ago about, um, I think it was a, I think it was a blogger or a vlogger who went on a river cruise and, um, they had the likes and they had the dislikes. Okay. And uh, they came out of it uh, with an overall positive, but a couple of things to warn you about, right? And what I found interesting was, and I've always wondered about this, was in the evening, um, you know, by, by three, four in the afternoon, it, depending on, on the, uh, the river and the distance covered, some of these river cruises will only go 15 miles up the river or down the river, and then that's it for the day. And then they're, they're at a, a pier and they're parked because they're giving you, the traveler, an opportunity to go off the ship and take a short excursion for, you know, the better part of the afternoon. And uh, you come back on board around 3.30 or so in the afternoon and, and you're having maybe a little bit of cake and coffee, a little afternoon you know, get together. Uh, then maybe heading to your suite and uh, changing and having a shower or changing into evening wear and getting ready for dinner at 5 or 5.30, whatever, whatever the time is, of course. Um, and enjoying any entertainment that's on board that day, which could be from that region of the cruise. And on we go. Now, um, in the brochures and on any, you know, most reviews that I've ever heard of, it's all just, you know, peaches and cream, strawberries and, and whipping cream. And it's wonderful times. And it's just ha heavenly and, uh, you know, relaxed and great. But then I read this review and what this, this reviewer was saying, well, yeah, the one night uh, we were um, uh, tied up at a pier, but we weren't at the pier. We were during the pier during the day, but in the evening, like after six o'clock when everyone was back on board, we uh, tied up for the night beside another ship, another cruise, a river cruise ship. And it was at the pier. So it had the pier and then we were next to it. So we were tied beside it. Now, of course, you know, river cruise means there's always a river moving. The water's always moving, you know, on the river. So the, the ships are tied to each other, which are tied to the pier. And this individual is saying, for all the passengers on this side of the ship, that their view now for the evening was right at the, <laughs> the other boat, the other cruise boat four feet away, uh, right there. And in the evening, um, you know, in the summertime, it's warm. And uh, sometimes the engines come on to put the vents, the ventilation systems on, the air conditioning systems on. And depending on where your room is, you might be the room closer to the uh, back of the ship where the engines are. And you hear the thing running all night long. Uh, there were these issues. And then there was another issue where the ship was going through a canal and it had to go up or down. And uh, they uh, they pulled in, and there was a lot of water there that was kind of stale. It would gather, and a lot of garbage was gathering on the water. It was kind of caught in a little bit of a vortex, and the uh, odor wasn't all that pleasant. And uh, so you heard, you occasionally would hear little things about the logistics of a river cruise, but uh, of course, all the propaganda you see is. Uh, you know the uh, the uh, sixty year old uh, the sixty year old husband with the forty year old wife, <laughs> the sixty five year old husband with the thirty five year old wife. Uh, those beautiful pictures of those uh, French balconies and the castles and the wonderful times and the perfect weather because it never showered or rained uh, on a river cruise. Um, and you know that's what that's their job. They're promoting the cruise, of course. Um, have you seen a rainy picture of a cruise ship from Carnival in the Bahamas? No. It's always perfect, right? So anyway, um, uh, I've heard some of these talks. So, th so this comment is a really good comment. So if any of you out there have been on a river cruise, I would love to hear firsthand account stories of any of these uh, not so pleasant experiences. Uh, just to kind of level the playing field a little bit. Not that I'm looking for nasty stories. I'm just kind of curious if anyone's uh, ever done that. Um, <laughs> let's see. Uh, Cam Wilson laughing out loud. Wendy, Bob Hollis, only when they follow the seaside, <laughs> the steaming bean, Samantha Farmer, never that's where the uh, poop deck is. The poop deck, You're laughing out loud. Steaming bean, why the haven? Why do they, uh, why, why can they see seaborne? Wendy Thompson, 2010, Amsterdam to Budapest. Here we go. In May, a food cabin, a food grate, cabin grate. Hobby says, never book the lowest deck, bring binoculars. There you go. Yeah. 
because the lowest deck you're right at the you're right at the river level i mean your unit might even be submerged uh, you're you're you know the water is kind of here and you've got your two feet your foot off the water in your with your window and you can't open the window uh nina frank uh, thumbs up so wendy thompson he calls it the basement yeah there you go the basement and that's where all the noises are all the vibrations everything you want to be higher up yeah two or they're only about three four stories up anyway but you want to be on the, the higher level and bring your binoculars you betcha absolutely um uh silo saying because the seaborne cruises seem a little sleepy and snooty uh, we looked at them <laughs> silo i think I would think on a river cruise, some kid on shore could hit you with a rock. Well, the rivers in some cases are about a half a mile, a mile wide. They're very wide. And they're um, they're uh, tr home to a lot of traffic. So not only river cruises, but also the barges that go up and down. Uh, and then, of course, there are the patrol boats up and down. Uh, but, uh, you know, any any kid, I guess, could take a shot at you with, with a slingshot or a good throw. But... Uh, I remember, uh, you know, even even if the river is, uh, you know, 300 feet wide, 400 feet wide, if you're in the middle of the river, you better have a pretty strong arm to get a rock all the way over uh, to to nail you on that. But it, it is Europe, uh, a little more grown up than maybe North America. I'd like to think, but anyway, Austria, Switzerland, uh, France, Germany would be a nice experience, I think, overall. Um, uh wendy says uh, say i recommended viking you get 100 bucks off the rate hey how about that maybe wendy gets something for her efforts too nothing wrong with that uh yeah so there's uh there's a uh, river cruising in a nutshell i mean i haven't covered river cruising in real depth i've never been on one the pricing is out of this world for, for me uh, when i can compare a seven day cruise on a you know north american based cruise ship or even mediterranean uh, during shoulder season the prices are so good uh, compared to a river cruise, it's so expensive. Uh, it's just out of my out of my league. Um, um, <laughs> Steaming Bean says, "My sister sails Seaborn. Pays to be a dentist." She, he's saying, "Silo, hey Bruce, you know we have Columbia River cruises. Uh, might be fun. There you go." And Samantha Farmer, remember on a river cruise that they if they cannot go, they put you on a bus. That, that's right. If they can't they can't go uh, that day, they'll take you up to where they were going on a bus. You'll do your day trip. Your your scheduled short excursion and they bus you back to the ship and you spend another night on the ship or the bus takes you and then eventually the ship might catch up with you that kind of thing yep there's always that and i've seen river cruises packages that are fantastic where they they put you up on two or three nights in a hotel in paris then you get on the ship in paris uh, or you take a bus from paris to the riverboat then you're on the riverboat for a week or 10 days and you end up in uh, you know whatever city and you're in a hotel there for a couple of days or you end up in a take a bus to vienna and now you're in Vienna for a couple of nights in a hotel, and it's all one package. And then, you, you know, you've flown in, you've flown out, and it's a package deal on the flights, the hotels, the whole vacay. Um, yeah, but it, it's pricey. There's no question about it. Um, Samantha, Simi, mean, I would have loved to have lived in the 1880s and sailed the uh, Mississippi with all the paddle boats, all the paddle wheelers. My goodness. Uh, no air conditioning. Yeah, that would have been tough, uh, that, especially the further south and later in the, you know, the middle of the summer. Pretty rough, uh, but uh, yeah, those were those were glorious days for the Mississippi, the the height of the uh, steamships. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, I think uh, I think we covered a couple of good points today. I think I'm going to wrap this up here. I think we've done all right. Uh, thanks for the thumbs ups today, guys. We've had a few come in again today. As as always, I appreciate it. Twenty three on the upside, three on the downside. Um, uh, again, uh, thanks for some of your stories on some of these ships and some of these adventures. Um, like I say, uh, they're, they were, they're funny now, but they weren't funny then. <laughs> Some of these events, I did get one email or a comment that, to, this morning from one of my viewers. He said to me, uh, he was, he was on the Oosterdam. He was in the spa, loving it. And he was in the shower and he was all soaked up and, uh, he was rinsing off the shower. The water went off. <laughs> Stop. And he was there for like five, I guess five or 10 more minutes. It didn't come back on. No water, no water sinks no water he had soap all over his back he said uh, hey he slept it back to the room <laughs> all soapy <laughs> shower was working in his room he finished the shower there he wasn't happy at the time but he's laughing now yeah one of those what are you gonna do it, it never happened to me on the Oosterdam. i had a seven day glorious cruise water worked all the time on the uh, on the ship everywhere on the ship but yeah, one of those stories where, wow, what are you going to do? Uh, when it goes, it goes. Uh, nothing you can do. 
Uh, anyway, there you have it. Another great show, Debbie's saying. See everybody tomorrow. Tomorrow is for two. Two shows tomorrow, uh, Thursday, 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, I don't know if I'll be doing two more shows going forward after that. I'm getting kind of tired. We'll have to see how it goes. Uh, but I'm thinking some trivia tomorrow might be in the offing. I might sprinkle a little trivia in both shows, a little in the first show, a little trivia in the second show. Have some fun with all you guys and some other cruise news as, as it comes out. See what we can do. Uh, thank you all for watching today. Thanks for your, your thumbs up. Thank you for the super chat today. Uh, Peter, for the hot dog. You got my wife covered for the hot dog. Maybe tomorrow I can get a super chat for the uh, the other hot dog. And just as a, as, a, as a note for you guys, uh, if you're sending me dough uh, through super chat, uh, YouTube does take a uh, 30% off the top for their handling and currency and all that stuff. If, however, you send me any money through PayPal, which is what up here on my homepage, uh, I get about 90, 93% of that. That there's just the handling fee for the currency and the money, and so I actually get more. So if you're sending me three bucks, I get more on a three dollar donation there than if a three dollar super chat donation. But I'll take it any way I can get it. Uh, I really don't mind. Uh, and I appreciate any donation I get. So thanks again to all of you who are supporting me, following my efforts and my exploits, and uh, supporting me uh, through uh, re, uh, retweeting my tweets or sharing my videos on Facebook, uh, making mentions of my channel anywhere on social platforms. I really appreciate it. It helps with the channel's growth and its exposure. I love it, and I, I commend all of you, and I thank all of you uh, every day I'm doing this. I thank all of you. So. Thanks for watching today. I hope you had a good time. I enjoyed it very much. I uh, hope I haven't bored anybody. Well, I bored three people. I got three downs, <laughs> three negatives today. But, hey, I can't, can't make it perfect for everybody. Um, we'll talk to you tomorrow. This is Bruce with Traveling with Bruce saying thanks for joining me today on my uh, YouTube channel for my 5 o'clock show today. I'll be on tomorrow at 5 o'clock and 8 o'clock Eastern time on this same channel uh, join me then and have a great night. In the meantime, everybody, we'll catch you guys tomorrow. Take care and goodbye.